Okay. Hello everyone and I welcome all of you from Student Guide in our today's first session about communications, verbal and oral one. So we will focus mostly on our oral, oral communications today. We had a small introduction before and uh, you would know now what communication means, right? So I will share my screen and I will share my slides. I will go through each slide and you would know what we are going to learn from today's session okay and if you have any question you can type in the chat box and i will answer those questions later on also at the end of the session we can have a small practical things where i will pitch make a group of two of you and you can have some kind i will give you a topic and you can show what you have learned today let me share my screen Okay, I hope all of you can share my screen now. Uh, let me put this into one. Okay, so my name is Noin and I am talking to you all the way from Canada. So I would like to say hi to all of you. It's a different time. I mean, I'm, we are completely in different time zone. It's a morning time now. And I will go without further, like next slides. So we just talked about talked about few things like we uh, gave introduction to each other we also told each other what we like to do so what do you know about communication does anyone know what the term communication is derived from anyone has an idea how this communication came okay so i will go to my next one the word communication is actually descended from a Latin noun, which means communicatio, which means sharing or imparting the knowledge. Just like we did a few minutes before, right? You gave your introduction, so everyone came to know about you. You told about your hobbies, so everyone came to know what do you want to do or what you do in your spare time. So what you were doing, you were sharing what about yourself you were sharing the knowledge about yourself with other people who were around you now what we will go to our next thing that what are the basic things or basic elements in communication and other steps there are five different forms of communications first is the verbal one that we did today and the next one is then the non-verbal one Non-verbal one is where you are not saying anything, but you are noticing the things in your surroundings. Then we have the written communications that we will cover in our next sessions. Then we have the listening. Listening is also a part of communication. If you are not speaking, but you are a listener, just like when you were speaking before, I was a listener. So that was that's also the part of communication. Then is the visual. Just like what you are seeing right now on the slide, this is called as the visual. If, for example, if I don't speak right now, I just mute myself, but you can still read. You can still see the information in the form of pictures, right? So what are the basic important things related to verbal? Let me turn on my pointer. So you see, this is the verbal here always use a strong and confident speaking voice this is very important you need to feel very confident like what confidence in what what you are going to say is a good correct and relevant information in addition uh, you need to have a faith in yourself that what you are going to convey can be useful information can be beneficial information always have your body language showing that yes you are fully confident i will show you how can you show such body language later on okay when we have the practical session so confidence is the first key in verbal communication then you need to be the active listening you need to be an active listener right so for active listening whatever you guys are doing right now you are being an active listener for me i am the person who is speaking and all of you are listeners you are listening to me and you're actively listening because you are not disturbing me you are not interrupting you are just taking what thing 
taking all the information, whatever I am saying, and then you're processing that information in your mind, in your brain, what I am saying, and then you are probably storing that information as a memory. Then or avoid like the filler words or the words which are not uh, which are not relevant, I would say, or which are the irrelevant words. Be very concise and precise and professional in your communication. You would not like, you need to think which type of the communications you are going to do. You are going to do a formal communication or informal communication. Just like what we are having right now, how we are talking with each other, it is all actually our formal communication, right? And when we were having the brief introduction before, that was informal communication. So there are diff two different types, formal and informal. The body language changes for formal as well as for informal communications, okay? So for the non-verbal, visual and written, we will see it later on, but non-verbal also sometimes falls under oral communications. It means notice how your emotions feel physically and in addition, how other people are feeling it, right? So you need to be very careful about your nonverbal communications. I will stop here and I will see all of me. Is everything okay? Okay, I will continue because this is a recorded session. You can see it later on too. So for non-verbal communication, you also have to be very intentional. What are your intentions to convey the message? And you need to mimic the non-verbal communications you find effective. Like you have to practice those. Then we will go towards our visual communications and in visual communications as you can see right now what you are seeing on my slides this is i am conveying through visual and you are being my audience you have to think about it which type of the audience you are targeting which type of the age group you are targeting and based on that age group on that audience level you are going to prepare your visual material for example if you are conveying your message for the pharmaceuticals, you would like to uh, prepare your visual material according to that. If you are preparing your material for example, for law, as one of you said that you are, she wants to be a lawyer. So then you have to prepare your slides according to that topic and your material. Material means not only the slides, but also the infomercials, the pamphlets, the flyers and everything. Then we go towards our written communications. Written communications is, it involves, it should be very simple, concise, precise language. And it should, you need to take a time to review your written communications before you Send it to other words. So that's what is the written communication because you are not only going to rely on tone. Yeah, you have to because people cannot see you, so they don't know uh, what uh, what is your tone in conveying that message. So you have to be very. The message should be very simple, should be reviewed two, three times that you are not using any abusive words, any offensive words in your written emails or in letters. And it, it really needs to only talk about the subject that you are addressing in the written communication. So I will go to the next slide. These are the, again, the key concepts of communication we already talked about. One is most importantly is the clear purpose. 
that it was not covered before. You need to have a clear purpose and expression directed to the needs of the reader. That what do you, what is the purpose of this communication? For example, what is the purpose of today's communication? It is about to learn how we can communicate effectively orally and as well as like uh, in, in verbal, which is also called as verbal, formally and informally, both. And then is the correct grammar. You always have to check your pronunciation of the words, your grammar and your spellings. If it is written on, on the visual then or the presentations, infomercials, then you need to check your spellings too. Now, before we go to our elements of communications, there are 10 basic elements of communications. One is the facial expressions. When you're expressing something, you need to see which type of the expressions you are showing to the other person. For example, if you are angry, then of course your facial expressions will be very angry. If you are conveying some message about some information that you want to convince the other person, like for example, if I have to convince you that acting is not good, why don't you join the law in the school? But you say that, no, you would like to go for acting. Now, then I have to, uh, when I am like picking up the words, I am uh, composing my communication style, then I would also like to change my tone. Maybe I will be more in my, my body language and my voice tone will be more like in more conveying fashion like i will be confident and i will share the information which should be precise and i would not be i cannot be aggressive with you that no you have to follow you have to study the law you cannot do that no i cannot be aggressive i need to be in a way that uh it should be effective like i should i should be a little bit compassionate i should be concise i should be more informative i should be more logical about my point so the other person can accept it also then it comes also for the gestures gestures is the body language i will show you at the end how you need to manage and master your body pose or your body language then is the hobo signs you see there are so many hobo signs which were used in the past you can see in the pictures to convey the message for example if you see these are the two uh, shapes which are together and it means it quiet keep quiet right this is a circle with the arrow it means go this way here is a square and with a circle with a dot in in between it means that ill temper right lives here so it's it's like different types of the hobo signs were used in the past to convey the message you can post this sign on the door and the person will know what does this sign mean and they will get the message then in today's world you can use the emoticons emojis maybe you have seen in your cell phone right different types of the smileys which you use then is the sign language sign language is when you use your hand especially for people who have some disabilities such as that they have they cannot hear they cannot speak you know so for them you use the sign language music music is another form of the communication some people they like to convey their message through music like by singing or just by playing the instrument without any words right so that's another type then the five uh, big five languages like languages means for example the language that you speak there are five big languages which include uh, english which include the arabic which include like uh, russian spanish so these are the language which are being spoken all over the world basically most of the populations they speak these languages and one of them the biggest one is definitely english which is international language and it is more global so most of the people they can be connected through one uh, common uh, and mutual medium which is basically english language now we go to our seven effective communication seven c's of communication clear be clear be concise what does clear means me make objective clear avoid complex words and phrases be concise keep it clear and to the point and as i already mentioned avoid the filler words and sentences then is the concrete be specific not vague don't beat the 
beat around the bush you know go to the clearly to your point what you want to say use facts and figures to support your message use logic if you want even if you are communicating with someone who is your competitor who is the opposite person like who is in the opposition you need to you cannot just attack verbally no you have to use the facts figures digits numbers and you have to use uh, like some logic that makes sense to convince the other person to win the argument right it should be more like a discussion where everyone both minds are very receptive minds right for example when esther for example esther in and israel if they both are talking to each other they cannot just attack each other both israel and esther needs to be receptive in their brain receptive means they need to be flexible in the brain for example esther needs to be flexible what is uh, israel is saying maybe esther does not agree and esther has different mindset but she needs to think maybe israel is right right and maybe israel is wrong then israel has to think that maybe esther is right so they both need to have a receptive mindset which means a flexible mindset there should be a room in your brain that you can accept other people's opinion other people's ideas and think about it process it in your brain if that information is logical it, if it is relevant should you agree with that or not okay so that also same goes with the correct use the correct information always try to avoid the typos and use the right level of language coherent does your message make sense we just talk about it right ensure it flows logically avoid covering too much this is another aspect you sh should always convey the message which is uh being asked like you should see where which type of the conversation you are having if you are having a highly formal conversation then you need to avoid extra information you need to answer only those questions which are being asked you don't need to give extra information that's not required that's not helpful that's not like that you are chatting that's a different chatting is a different situation so avoid covering too much information too much extra information that is not required to be conveyed in that message make sure it is complete does the message contain everything it needs to include a call to action if it is complete and it requires some action afterwards make down the points meeting notes and everything like that and be courteous be polite because it will build the goodwill gesture right ensure that your message is tactful too now if we go to the five c's of verbal communication you can see here competent so competent means you have to back it up when whatever you are saying or selling be not only totally prepared but also be able to back it up for example if you are you have put some point some agenda or something for a meeting or some motion right that i want to discuss about this thing but then you have to prepare the backup material because uh, the other person will ask you okay for example esther is saying that uh, i would like to pass this motion or i would like to discuss uh, this thing that i should buy this that we should buy this type of the printer for our off office and not this printer then of course you should be prepared mentally with all the information okay all the information means that uh, okay uh, i will ask the nester i said okay if you want to buy this type of the printer but why why do you want to buy this printer then esther cannot say that oh because i like it no that doesn't make any sense esther should say that uh, i want to buy because you know this computer is better than this computer this computer has these features which are not included in this printer in addition this printer is also economical and it is on sale right now and this printer is not sale and it is even expensive for this printer we probably need to change the ink frequently but for this printer maybe we don't have to so these are the important points that this printer had and this printer does not have right 
and then i will say okay esther that's a good thing that's a very good point that you brought up uh, i will think about it but do you think that we have a budget for this computer uh, because for this the other one we was covering it from other funds so how will we cover this computer's funds you know the budget include it in our budget then esther has to prepare for another question, right? So this is the component that you need to have the backup information. You must be good at what you are suggesting others to follow on as well, okay? Then you need to be calm. You cannot be very emotional when you are having communications because if you will let emotions run, then it will be all flat, right? It will turn into a disaster because the other person will all it will instigate the emotion in the other persons too for example the same way we can take example of printers like esther is saying that okay knowing we want to have this printer and i am saying okay why would you like to have this printer then if esther gets emotional and esther says no 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 i would like to have this printer because i like it i would say okay that doesn't make any sense and when I will say that doesn't make any sense, Esther gets more emotional. And she said, no, 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 I would like to have this. And she starts fighting and attacking. No, you have to be very calm. Even if the situation involves emotions, you have to be very calm. And you have to listen what other people are saying. Be clear. Don't beat around the push. That's what I said before. State exactly what you want other people to do or why they should follow. So this is very important that you need to be clear in your communications concise don't waste valuable time i mean if i am giving you 10 minutes i don't want it to be wasted i would like to get the information we would like to get if we are discussing the task for the next day we would like those tasks to get done for the next day we cannot uh, just waste our time of meeting like talking about something which is not relevant at all like if we even in the meeting when we start our meeting we can say hello how are you is everything okay that's good but that's it we cannot just go around okay so what what did like we we cannot waste our time if we don't have it right so we should be very concise about it the next is component more components of the more communication model what are the important components for the communications first is the sender who is the sender i am the sender right now because i'm speaking to you right the speaker is the center and which skills the center must have the senders must have the communication skills sender must have the right attitudes sender must have the experience sender should be a little bit cultured and civilized so the sender is not using any abusive language any offensive language and sender should also <clears throat> know about the audience culture that from which background the audience are coming from sender should have the self-concept about the communication then the next element or the component is the message, right? What are the basic elements of the message? What is the structure of the message? What is the content I am delivering? For example, right now I'm delivering about the communication styles in oral communications. Uh, which type of the treatments are required? What type of the coding you are using? Coding means which type of the words, which type of the abbreviations you are using, right? Then comes the channel. Channel means which medium? medium means here you can see here too medium means seeing like <clears throat> for communication just seeing each other like i am seeing looking at you you're looking at me even if sometimes we don't speak we can uh pick the message from our body languages right even if we don't speak it by our facial expression for example if i don't say anything but if my face shows i'm very angry i don't have to say anything you will get it that i am that she is angry right by just looking at my face then is touching touching is another form of communication for example if you are hugging someone then of course you are showing the warmth you are showing the love you are showing the affection you don't have to say the words if you are like pushing someone in anger that shows that you are angry at that person which is not actually good because that comes under the physical violence that you cannot do it then is the smelling you can also do the smelling for example like in this case there are different types of i can give you examples of flowers right when you smell flowers who have a nice scent you like them 
you like them you feel good right but certain scents are not good they just go into your brain and your brain process the information and you hate that smell basically so smelling is another form of the communication then tasting tasting it same goes with the food for example some sort of the food you like some sort of the food you don't like but when you're tasting that food that is actually a form of communications with your brain and your brain is processing that information the other medium is uh, or component is receiver you are receiver right now because you are getting all the information from me right and you also need to show the right attitudes as i can see all of you are very attentive you are not talking to each other you are listening to me so you have a right attitude to be present in the class then you need to have also experience for the knowledge for example you came today in in our class for communications so i would like I would expect you to have some background about the communications before you come to this class. So I would expect that you may have some experience about it. You are not coming from a zero source where you have zero experience or zero knowledge, right? And same goes with your culture and your self-concept. Self-concept is the same thing, your knowledge, your confidence and everything. I will go to the next. So what you always, always have to follow when you are talking with other people, your body language, that is very important. You don't want to give them any sort of uh, wrong message, okay? I will actually show you how you can do that. Be open-minded that I already talked. You need to have a very flexible mind, very flexible mindset so you can take some information from the other person because not everyone is perfect, right? Some people can be wrong, in their com in their logics but if you're wrong then you have to be open-minded to accept that yes i am wrong and you are right then you have to be active listening you have to be an active listener just like you all of you are right now i statements you have to avoid too many i statements because if you see so much i i i me 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 it seems you are so much self-focused person so much into self you are so much self-centric you're so much into yourself which is not a good message because when you are talking with other person you're communicating with the other person it it is very much collaborative it should be very much inclusive right inclusive is very important you are including the other person in the conversation if you will talk only about yourself that is wrong right you are conveying the wrong message compromise the same thing be open-minded and compromise at certain situation that even if other person is not completely right but if the person is not completely wrong and if you are not completely wrong be uh, reached to some level of compromise okay you are right at this i am right at this how about we find a middle way how about we find a middle way in our argument to get something done then you need to have some you must learn how to be confident, how to be active listener, how to show the empathy, how to translate the information. Like translation does not mean from one language to another language. Translation means that the message you are getting, how your brain is translating according to your own thoughts, according to your own logics. How is it translating that information according to that? Okay and then is the interpersonal connection interpersonal connection just like before this session i had introduction with you i wanted to know more about you and i i was very surprised some of you wanted to be in engineers some of you wanted to be in actresses some of you wanted to be uh, in the law and so it was and some of you wanted to be a cook like a chef you know so it was such an interesting thing so this is my interpersonal connection because now i know okay she wants to be an actress maybe i can share some information about acting with her maybe she is a good cook maybe i can tell her what i like in cook in cooking what i like to eat right <clears throat> or maybe i would like to know which rest which type of the restaurant she would like to have when she grows up of her own or which type of the food she likes to cook the most right and so i would that's the interpersonal connection be diplomacy diplomacy is important diplomacy means that you need to have a sometimes a, a double approach for example if you have if you want the other person to follow your message or to know that what you want to do, right? 
then sometimes you need to use this approach in a way that you are conveying your message to but at the same time you are accepting and you are saying yes to the other person's interference also for example if you are presenting something to me which is not really good at all and i am saying oh okay for example i can give example of israel for example israel wanted to be a computer engineer right and israel i gave a project to israel and israel has worked over that project he prepared the slides and he showed me the slide that this is the data i am showing but i know that this is total crap like this is not good all of this data is not good at all it does it's not relevant at all right then i cannot say directly to israel israel this data is not good no i have to be a little diplomatic in my approach i can say oh israel the data that you you have worked really hard israel it shows you really put efforts into it really good you are a good worker really good i really like it that way you have worked the experimental design also seem okay it seems good um but you know what i think that this data has some problems in it and maybe we can fix it what do you think about it and then israel with because i'm not directly attacking that israel this is not all good you did didn't do a good job no i am going to an indirect approach right and then israel will be happy right is i will say yeah i actually appreciate it that i have put some efforts and like this and sector like so he will say oh yeah sure 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 how can we improve this data how can we make this data better than uh, like uh, others right so <clears throat> then of course this would go into the diplomacy thing okay i am not sure if you all can hear me uh okay yeah okay we are back so okay because i can hear you as well okay good so i will continue <clears throat> next is the honesty you need to be very honest in your approach and whatever you are saying you need to be a little bit you cannot like lie about certain facts for example in the same example israel cannot lie about the data he cannot say or he cannot make up or he cannot do these things so he needs to be very honest even if he has some data where he failed to get something he should be very honest i couldn't do it and then he should say okay can you please guide me how can i do it and then he can ask for support and help so i will pause actually this presentation here and let me so good to see that yes, everyone is back here thank you no worries everyone is back here right so i would like to show you this video just watch this video and see how the communication is actually meant to be Hello and welcome to the Communication Olympics, where kids are tested to see who can speak up and listen well. I'm your host, Walker Walter. And I'm your host, Melissa Marissa. First, we have John Rigby. Last year, he famously took out his cell phone while Frankie Richardson was telling him about how her cat, Mr. Pickles, had died. I know. It seems we can't see the video. Care about what she had to say. What we can't see is the slide. I said, what we can see is the slide. You Close cannot see the head. video? No, we can just see the slide. Okay, let me actually share my screen and go to the directly to the YouTube. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me know if you can see the video now. Yes, we can see the video now. Thank okay. You. Hello and welcome to the Communication Olympics, where kids are tested to see who can speak up and listen well. I'm your host, Walker Walter. And I'm your host, Melissa Marissa. First, we have John Rigby. Last year, he famously took out his cell phone while Frankie Richardson was telling him about how her cat, Mr. Pickles, had diabetes. It's like he didn't even care about what she had to say at all. We have our judges scoring our athletes on a scale of 1 to 10. This is the 
listening event, so judges will be looking oh, for proper active technique. Judges are looking for eye contact and nodding. You also have to give someone undivided attention, meaning you're actually trying to understand what the person is saying. Asking questions and making acknowledging statements also leads to a high mm. score. Let's take this to our woman on the ground, Carissa Callahan. Carissa? John is engaging in conversation with his friend Valentina. So Steph just left me. I didn't have anyone to see the movie with. And she didn't even say sorry. Like we've been friends since she moved in across She's the street. We're not following. Yeah, it's like really messed up. Hello, that wait, question wait, asking. Uh, Olivia, what are you saying? Olivia, are you saying something? Olivia, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, now. I, okay. Just let me know. I will ask. I will share the video and let me know if you guys can watch it or not. Okay. All right. Okay, so I will go back to the video. We'll make it bigger. Start a scape. and let me share my screen without further delay. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Communication Olympics where kids are test All of you can uh, hear me? All of me? Yes, we can hear you. We can see the video. Okay, good. To, to see who can speak up and listen well. I'm your host, Walker Walter. And I'm your host, Melissa Marissa. First, we have John Rigby. Last year, he famously took out his cell phone while Frankie Richardson was telling him about how her cat, Mr. Pickles, had diabetes. It's like he didn't even care about what she had to say at all. We have our judges scoring our athletes on a scale of 1 to 10. This is the listening event, so judges will be looking for proper active listening techniques. Judges are looking for eye contact and nodding. You also have to give someone undivided attention, meaning you're actually trying to understand what the person is saying. Asking questions and making acknowledging statements also leads to a high score. Let's take this to our woman on the ground, Carissa Callahan. Carissa? John is engaging in conversation with his friend Valentina. So Steph just left me. I didn't have anyone to see the movie with, and she didn't even say sorry. Like, we've been friends since she moved in across she the street. That. Yeah, it's like really messed up. I love that question asking. He would have gotten a higher score for restating what Valentina's original concern was and asking a clarifying question. But overall, it shows he's engaged. I have like three hours at home. Like two oh no, it looks like a really, really cool caterpillar is climbing pretty close to John's sandwich. Look at those colors. This is a very cool caterpillar. Let's see what happens. Like we don't even watch music videos together. Oh, hey, cool. Look at this caterpillar. Hey, look at what? <gasps> he wants to talk about that very cool caterpillar because he's no longer interested in the conversation but also wants to be a good friend to Valentina. Hey, you know, that really sucks. Have you tried telling her how you feel and that you're upset? I haven't. It's pretty cool of you to hear me out like this. Let's get to Mr. Roberts. And he recovers. John clearly did the right thing by not getting distracted, even if he was getting bored. Then he nailed it with a great introspective question. Judges give it an 8.2. He was docked a few points for looking away, and we could have seen John stating the concern back to her. Back to you, Melissa Marissa. Wow, that really was a great caterpillar. <laughs> Next up, we're looking for effective communication style. Like how someone sounds when they talk? Definitely not, Walker. Judges are looking for assertive communication, which means being direct and honest about what you want without using any put-downs or making someone feel bad. That's what I meant. <clears throat> Today we're looking at Natasha Stevens. Let's jump right in as we see her being pushed to take money from her parents' money jar in the kitchen. Dude, the money's right in the kitchen. Take 10 bucks so we can go get gulpies at Fasty Mart. I don't really want a gulpie. Yeah, right. Uh-oh. We know Natasha. She's not being direct enough. She doesn't want to steal from her parents. She does really want a gulpie. If we were at my house, 
I do it. Okay, you know, maybe they won't notice. This is classic passive communication. Scores very poorly with judges. Wait, wait. It looks like Natasha might turn this around because she's literally turning around. Dude, you know what? It's not right to steal from my parents. It's not worth losing their trust. I don't know if you can come over if you're going to act like this. And by the way, I always want a gulpy. Okay, I hear you. I haven't seen a comeback like that since Skip Levinson in the 68 games. Perfect example of assertive communication. Judges give it an 8.9. She started out passively. She gave in and said yes, even if she didn't want to. Maybe she can try yelling at him next time to make him feel bad for stealing. That's what we call aggressive communication, and it too scores poorly with judges. When you're responding out of rage or fear, you can hurt someone's feelings and even violate their rights. When she turned around, it was classic assertive communication. She was direct about how she felt, even if it was hard to say. That's all the time we have today. I'm Marissa Melissa. And I'm assertively communicating that we're out of time. Nice try, Walter. Okay, signing off. Okay, everyone. So I will also show you another form. It's a TED talk. It's about miscommunication. We have talked a lot about the communications, how to communicate properly and everything, but we haven't talked about what it means for miscommunication. So in previous video, you have seen about uh, passive um, communication, active communication and uh, and passive aggression and aggressive communication styles so you see in the second example in the first example how he was the active listener with the sandwich and in the second example you have seen um how the girl wanted to convey the message but she could not and she gave in she did not convey what she wanted to say so she was going on so she was that was the passive attitude right but she turned back and she said no it's a wrong thing to do that was okay that was a good communication but she did not attack him that it is really wrong you are a bad person or no she did not attack it she just said it is wrong to do it and that was the perfect way for communication and she did it honestly right so i will go to the next video and i will actually share my screen here again all of me can you watch it or see uh, listen to me all of me can you listen to me yes, i can hear you okay good have you ever talked with a friend about a problem only to realize that he just doesn't seem to grasp why the issue is so important to you? Have you ever presented an idea to a group and it's met with utter confusion? Or maybe you've been in an argument when the other person suddenly accuses you of not listening to what they're saying at all. What's going on here? The answer is miscommunication. And in some form or another, we've all experienced it. It can lead to confusion, animosity, misunderstanding, or even crashing a multi-million dollar probe into the surface of Mars. The fact is, even when face to face with another person in the very same room and speaking the same language, human communication is incredibly complex. But the good news is that a basic understanding of what happens when we communicate can help us prevent miscommunication. For decades, researchers have asked what happens when we communicate. One interpretation, called the transmission model, views communication as a message that moves directly from one person to another, similar to someone tossing a ball and walking away. But in reality, this simplistic model doesn't account for communication's complexity. Enter the transactional model, which acknowledges the many added challenges of communicating. With this model, it's more accurate to think of communication between people as a game of catch. As we communicate our message, we receive feedback from the other party. Through the transaction, we create meaning together. But from this exchange, further complications arise. It's not like the Star Trek universe, where some characters can Vulcan mind melt, fully sharing thoughts and feelings. 
As humans, we can't help but send and receive messages through our own subjective lenses. When communicating, one person expresses her interpretation of a message, and the person she's communicating with hears his own interpretation of that message. Our perceptual filters continually shift meanings and interpretations. Remember that game of catch? Imagine it with a lump of clay. As each person touches it, they shape it to fit their own unique perceptions based on any number of variables, like knowledge or past experience, age, race, gender, ethnicity, religion, or family background. Simultaneously, every person interprets the message they receive based on their relationship with the other person and their unique understanding of the semantics and connotations of the exact words being used. They could also be distracted by other stimuli, such as traffic or a growling stomach. Even emotion might cloud their understanding. And by adding more people into a conversation, each with their own subjectivities, the complexity of communication grows exponentially. So as the lump of clay goes back and forth from one person to another, reworked, reshaped, and always changing, it's no wonder our messages sometimes turn into a mush of miscommunication. But luckily, there are some simple practices that can help us all navigate our daily interactions for better communication. One, recognize that passive hearing and active listening are not the same. Engage actively with the verbal and nonverbal feedback of others and adjust your message to facilitate greater understanding. Two, listen with your eyes and ears, as well as with your gut. Remember that communication is more than just words. Three, take time to understand as you try to be understood. In the rush to express ourselves, it's easy to forget that communication is a two-way street. Be open to what the other person might say. And finally, four, be aware of your personal perceptual filters. Elements of your experience, including your culture, community, and family, influence how you see the world. Say, this is how I see the problem, but how do you see it? Don't assume that your perception is the objective truth. That'll help you work towards sharing a dialogue with others to reach a common understanding together. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from this TED Talk. You can watch it on YouTube too. So you can see in this uh, presentation, it is very important that you understand what other person is saying if you want yourself to be understood by the other person, right? The same thing that I said, you need to have a flexible mindset. You cannot come from the rigid mindset. You need to have a receptive uh, you need to be very receptive for opinions, for suggestions, for ideas. Also, cultural and your upbringings have lots of influence. How you see the world, how you see other people, how you see other commun communities. So you need to put those things beside. You can say that this is how I can see this according to my experience. What do you think about it? And the other person will share their experience. And then you will find the middle way, which I already shared, could be the compromise, right? Now, I will go, it's like your aha moment, right? What did you learn today? So we will go in our practical sessions in a minute. And then I would like to say thanks to you for being here. Let me stop sharing my screen because I would like to see you and I would like to have a practical test now. Uh, all of me, is it okay for you to share your screen? Yes, so did it. Okay. okay, everyone, so let's go for the body language and for the confidence, right? So I would like to take two of you uh, who wanted to be actresses, basically. Esther and who was the other person? There were two who, yeah, both of you. So you both of you should, you should, should talk to each other. Just look at each other. Just sit like this, very strong, very firmly and straight. Just sit like this. Have a seat like this, straight, very straight. No bending, no like this, just straight. Okay? And like very straight, very firm. Your hands, your body language should be very firm and confident. Okay? So now, let's see, Esther, uh, for you, what 
uh, I asked you before this question that what you like to be. You said you want to be an actress. Now I would like to hear this answer again. Esther, what do you like to be? I like to be an actress. Okay. Okay. So okay. So you can say this way, Esther. You are saying where you are sitting very firmly, very straight. It shows your confidence. But then you have to say it this way. I would like to be an actress. Okay, yes. so you can say it with full confidence, with full tone, with your face is literally supporting actually what you are saying, right? So she, you cannot say this way, I want to be an actress. You see, there is no expression on my face. It is not supporting my tone. There is no confidence in my tone, what I am saying. It is not supporting my expression. And I also cannot say, I want to be an actress, right? This is too much right this is too much and other person was saying oh, oh hold on stand there so you need to be very composed you need to compose yourself so you can say i want to be an actress just a normal right not so much hands moving you are not doing the debates unless and until you are trying to say something in more logics then you can move your hands around but this is just a simple question so i would like to ask you again as yeah. What would you like to be? I would like to be an actress. Yeah, you see, it is much improved gesture, right? And okay, so then let's go. I would like to ask a question that, oh, Esther, I don't like actually acting so much. So how would you react to it? She said she doesn't like acting. Yeah, if I say I don't like acting so much, uh, why do you want to be an actress? So how would you approach this? okay so you can uh you can say that uh i understand that you don't like acting i respect your opinion but actually i really like it uh and then i will ask why you like it you can say i like it because you have a chance to uh, like portray different characters, you know, to live different characters. For example, you can live a character of a very rich woman, you can live a character of a medical doctor, you can uh, experience the character of an astronaut even, right? In acting, you can be anything. You can live that actor and you can get experience from those characters, right? So this is how you will respond. You will not respond uh, if, some people would respond this way if I will tell them, oh, I don't like acting. Why you want to be an actor? The other person can also respond this way. I don't care if you don't like acting. I want to be an actor. That's it. And uh, you know nothing about acting. Perhaps you go and educate yourself. No, this is like attacking other person. And this is like without talking any knowledge. So you can say, no, actually acting is interesting because you get a chance to live different character. So what is this? You are having some backup information. You are having some, in, you know what you want to do. So you have a knowledge about it, right? So similarly, there was some one kid here who wants to be a chef, right? Where is that kid? Wanted, who likes to cook. <laughs> Okay, so I can see that kid there in the background. So uh, I would like to ask you this question. Can you please come in the front actually? Just so I can see your body language. Okay, can we see? Okay, <clears throat> so I would like to ask you this question. Um, so first is the same question, introduce yourself. I would like to see now again how you are going to introduce yourself. My name is Feva Okay. I would love to be a businesswoman in the future. Okay, good. Okay, anyway, I like the way you are sitting. You are sitting in a, a nice straight posture. You have confidence. These two things are good for you. The third thing is now, uh, you said that you like to cook. So my question is, which type of the food you like to cook? Rice. Rice, but there are several types of rice. Which type of the rice you like to cook? Prime, prime. 
Fried. Did she say fried or what? Fried. Okay, I don't know that type of the dishes, so maybe. Anyway, I am just getting it wrong. Anyway, so let's do it. Let's go from there. Uh, would you like to start your restaurant when you grow up? Sure? No. No? So, what would you like to do then when you grow up? <laughs> Which business? Clothing business. Clothing business. Okay, that's interesting. So, why do you want to do the clothing business? Like, do you know anything about the which type of the style you like in clothing? Do you like uh, traditional? Do you like more like in trends? Which type of the style you like in trending? Like in, in clothing? Sorry. <laughs> so that's okay. So here we go. So that's good you shared information with me that you would like to have a clothing business. And then I asked you which type of the clothing business, which type of the clothes you like. So you need to say anything which comes in your mind, but you have to process it. You see how I am talking. I haven't prepared this communication that I'm having with you right now, right? But I am just processing all the information and I'm just saying it with full confidence that maybe I'm right. Sometimes when you even say the wrong information with full confidence, the other person thinks, oh, maybe this was, this is right. Maybe I am wrong, right? So this is very important. So you know that you want to have a clothing business. And I am pretty sure you also know which type of the styles you like. You like more traditional Nigerian styles, or you like more like a trending and the fashion, like more which is in fashion or latest styles. I know you already know which styles you like, right? But you have to just say it, right? And you have to support why you want to do it. Like it should show your passion. For example, what is my passion? Maybe my passions are about colors. So when I will speak about colors, I will show my passion. You can see from my body, body language. This is very important component. When you go for interview for a job, when you go for interview for a job, then, for example, uh, Esther wants to be an actress. She is going for an audition to be for an acting. You want to start a clothing business. You are going to some person who can give you some funds, right, to start your business for capital, which is called as a venture uh, companies. You are going there. They will ask you why we should invest in your company. Why do you want to start this clothing business? Then you need to show your passion. No, I really love clothing. I really like how um, uh, I'm very much uh, interested in women clothing, especially, or in children clothing or in men's clothing. First, you have to choose your category. Then you can say, I always like the different styles, the colors, the designs. I'm very much into the arts. And I always like, I, I always believe that a dress is something that uh, adds to your personality, that brings your personality. Sometimes people have a very, people are very beautiful but they if they are not having a dress sense in a right way it can decrease their personality or impression you know on the other people but if they have a right sense of what they are wearing it will increase their personality impression right so you will you can add all these points that also i want to make some experiments and like these things and in in dresses for example i like more like a uh, pant shirts or uh, like a formal dressing or i like gowns i would like to go in the wedding area i would like to design more gowns or i would like to design some sort of the informal type of the dressing like a cat or a casual dressing or you so you can then then it will show your passion and the other person will say oh she's so passionate about what she does or what she wants to do and she has so much first thing she's so passionate second uh, first thing actually she's so confident what she wants to do second in her idea second she's so passionate about what she wants to do third thing she has a knowledge about what she wants to do fourth then what comes is the market research she knows about the market what is in the trend 
does this business because if someone is investing in your business they would like to get the money out of it right so they will he will say oh she has a complete knowledge about market that this business can go higher and then they will say okay i think i will invest in your business i will give you funds right so communication is so important you see you just sold your idea and for example, if act, uh, Esther is going for audition for acting, she can just sell her acting skills, why she wants to be an actor, which type of the acting she wants to do. She wants to do the method acting. She wants to do the other types of acting. And it will show whichever act, character they will tell her, it will show that she is really into that. She's leaving that character, right? She's feeling. Now, for actors, they also not only communicate they also show from their body language right which is the visual emotions feeling so how she is feeling that character if some woman is in pain and she is portraying playing that character so how's she feeling that she is actually feeling that pain and you can actually believe in her that she is having that pain right so these are important elements though. I would end here. And next time when we will have our second thing, I will actually have a preview about this session. And maybe I will give all of you an assignment. All of you prepare a two minutes pitch. Now two, what is, I can write it in the chat box. Uh, all of you prepare two minutes pitch about what you like to do when you grow up. And you have to sell that pitch or idea to me and I need to be convinced, okay? So this is your assignment for next time. I will end it here. And do you have any question, any of you? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, communication. Does someone um where someone made a mistake and um a communicative or not? Okay, uh, his vo her voice disconnected. Uh, uh, Olu, can you please uh, let me know again? And, um, when communicating, uh, someone made a mistake in communicating, can it uh, affect someone or not? Can it affect uh, his idea? Yes. Okay, so you mean to say if someone is communicating and someone is making mistakes during communications, right? Yes. So how would you like to approach that person and tell that person that that person is making mistakes? No, what she's asking is if she's the one communicating and she makes some mistake while speaking, while speaking majorly, can it affect the message she's passing across and how can she escape the situation? Yeah, that is a very good question, actually. If you make mistakes when you are communicating, it will definitely affect your uh, message you are conveying. For example, not only in this situation, also the language wise, right? If you don't know the proper vocabulary, proper words, which are necessary and you're using the like completely out of context words, then it will completely change the meaning. Um, for example, if you are conveying some message, if you are here in North, for example, if you are in Germany, right? And you are trying to communicate, you need a help, but you don't know how to speak German. You only knew a few words, but you don't maybe you know the words you read it somewhere but you don't know the correct pronunciation of those words so you are pronouncing it completely wrong and when you are pronouncing those words completely wrong then you are conveying completely different message when you are complaining completely different uh, conveying completely different message then the other person cannot get what do you want right how can they help you then and it will completely lead you into a difficult situation so 
uh, if if it happens and you are have like even if you know the language and you have done some mistakes and the message is conveyed completely wrong way for example if you are in a hurry i am in a rush i am in a hurry i just have to uh, leave and i have to leave my office where i work and i am in a hurry i have to leave that place but uh, if someone comes up with uh, something and but i have some task very important task to complete i will give it to my colleague i will say okay you know what you can you can you do that this thing because i have to go and i will leave because i'm in a rush right i did not say anything properly that what this task is about how this task should be done can i made so many mistakes in my communications because i was in a rush right and and or maybe i was not polite because i was in a rush i was not polite enough the other person can take it wrong completely wrong so how you can do when you know that this has happened and this was a mistake by me and i did it so there are two ways first if it is it is like affecting the other person you can say i would like to apologize i am sorry i made uh, some mistakes in communications uh, i was actually in a rush or i was in a, i had to go somewhere urgently so i could not say that but i will make sure it will not happen in future but uh, this is what i actually wanted to say to you at that time and if in another case if it is like for the help and the other person is not getting that what you want then and if you not don't know the language and you are saying the wrong words and the other person is not getting to help you if you are in accident or something you can always say the sign languages you can use your hands right you can use your hand you can use your body language you can use your facial expressions as a tone to convey your message that for example if you have pain but you are not sure what to say so you can say that i have like here pain this is just the facial expression to convey right the message that you really need it means you need to go to the hospital so you can say some sort of these type of the sign languages that you can use and in some cases where it is not this case but you are talking with an other person to have a deal just like for the business right you are going to have you want to have a deal with them to get some money for your business and you are making mistakes and in communication or your data is wrong so you can always say you know what and the other person is getting angry now on you that okay i i don't think i got your point i am not going to invest in your business you can go you can say okay uh, thanks a lot i respect your opinion i respect your suggestion what you are saying but uh, i would like to take your guidance i i understand you don't want to give me money for my business it's okay but i would like to understand how can i improve myself how can i improve this idea what is your experience what is your suggestion about it and then the person will say uh okay yeah yeah let me give you some tips and the person will give you tips it's not necessary that you are going to follow all the tips that the person will give but you can still take those tips and you can process in your mind and you can say okay whether it is a good tip or it is a bad tip and you can use that right so any other question question people yeah yeah Okay, no questions. Okay, if there is no question, I wish all of you a wonderful evening and a great time. And we see each other next next weekend and prepare your assignment. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. 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 And Abara, you are going to stay.